Okay. Uh, good win Saturday. Uh, first conference game. Did a lot of good things in the game. Um, did a great job on third down offensively. Nine of 12, five of five touchdowns in the red area. I think for the year we're 6-0 in the turnover ratio. Uh, taking it away six times, have not turned the ball over. Uh, responded to their field goals or scores with scores. Had a 90-yard drive, an 87-yard drive, two 75s. Defense held them to under 250 yards total offense and two of eight on third down. So uh, there weren't any real splash plays on special teams in this game. So, you know, good solid performance. Uh, all eyes on Charlotte, team that's proven c capable of playing up at, at a very competitive level. You know, last year they played Maryland, led at halftime, one score game in the fourth quarter. Florida was a ball game throughout the entire game. And uh, Carolina this year is a one score game in the third quarter. So uh, they have a lot of transfers. They have a lot of athletes. Uh, their defensive line is big and, uh, and they can move. They got a receiver that can really go. So, um, you know, there's a standard we do everything to. And we've, you know, we want to keep improving as a team. And we've got to have a great week of preparation. It starts with the staff and uh, stay humble and hungry uh, as we prepare for this next opponent. Zach, on your left and Jack. I know you talked about it some Saturday night, but as you evaluate after the fact, Curtis's performance, nine of nine on third downs, his role in some of those long drives you talked about, keeping things on schedule, making the right decisions, just what really stands out in maybe a, a film review of his performance from Saturday? Yeah, I thought he played uh, really well. and. Uh, did a really nice job with his eyes and was accurate. Um, we did a great job protecting. We had no sacks. And uh, you know, receivers did a nice job of separating and, and made some really good catches, too. So uh, I thought he played extremely well. Jack, any left and Pete? Yeah, Kurt, I know Charlotte has had some quarterback injuries, and there, there may be some uncertainty with that position. I guess how does that affect the way that you prepare with them? And do you see like major differences with their quarterbacks, like whoever it may be? Yeah. Well, um, they've played three guys. They played two guys in the last game, brought a guy in in the fourth quarter, a little older guy. Uh, the backup was a, a younger guy. Um, so, you know, we'll prepare for both uh, schematically, more so in terms of what they do, what they like to do. They have a receiver that can really go that number three and a tight end 18 is a good player. Um, so, you know, maybe the younger guy, uh, has a little bit of a liver arm, and uh, his mobility might be a little more. But the older guy has got the experience, kind of the moxie, understands how to play. So w it won't affect our game plan a whole lot. Yeah. Pete on your left row, too, and then Ken. Um, at, at receiver with, with Elijah, when, what was it you saw about him that made you want to bring him to, to, you know, obviously to James Madison? And then how much has he improved since then? What, what attributes did he have that maybe yeah. others didn't see? Well, we needed receivers that year in the portal, and as a freshman at St. Francis University, it's an FCS school. You know, he was all conference, uh, had about 50 catches for about a thousand yards, you know, give or take. And uh, you know, he had he had a skill set, and uh, but like I said, you know, he he got injured in the spring, didn't do a whole lot, and uh, the first game he was third team. But by, you know, against Virginia, the second game, uh, we won that game. We made some key plays, and he was starting by the third or fourth game. And uh, he's just a very competitive uh, guy, a uh, guy you can really trust, and uh, really good at contested catches, smart. I mean, he loves ball. And I, I think you see a trust factor really developing with uh, Curtis and him and Cross, who Curtis has played with at Ohio U. And, you know, the other guys that are in there. Besides, obviously, what he could do physically, how important has it been to have uh, Curtis just be a guy who's a veteran guy, played a lot of football, and seen a lot of things prior to, co to coming here just to help him gain the trust of guys, learn your system, and go forward with it with, with some manner of consistency? How important right. has that been for this ball club? Well, to me, that's the key, the drill. and. You know, we've had great success the last three years with the one-year transfers. You know, we took Todd Centeno, uh, who developed and was player of the year in the league. Uh, 
uh, on offense, and then we got uh, Jordan McLeod. And they were both older guys that had played, and Curtis obviously had track record before he came. So it's not like you're teaching a young guy how to play the position. You're, you got older guys that know how to play the position, and now you're just fitting them into your uh, offensive structure and then build upon the things that they do well. And uh, so, you know, that position, there's just so many things that go on. Uh, to have an older guy, uh, you can't put a value on it. To be able to go on the road in conference and get a big win like that, you mentioned a couple of plays to be able to respond to what UCLA did in that second half as well. What do those types of things say about the maturity of this team? Well, we do have a lot of guys on this team that have played a lot of football across the board. Um, we, have, we do have a couple new guys on the offensive line, but at all the other positions, we have a veteran outfit. We're, we're veteran on the defensive line and at linebacker. And, uh, you know, Farrell's still kind of a younger guy. Uh, but we've got, uh, other than that, we're, we've got experience on defense as well. So, um, you know, I thought we responded uh, really well. We, we, we started very fast. Now, obviously, they fumbled the first play after we had 7 nothing. We were up 14 nothing before you blink an eye. Um, but in the second half, you know, we had some adversity, obviously, with the penalties on defense. And, uh, you know, there was no panic or frustration. Uh, you know, maybe there was frustration in terms of what was going down. Uh, but our guys kept their poise and responded. And uh, so, I, you know, I thought that was great. Daniel Frank and Owen. You mentioned Amari. Um, it, it feels like you guys have him kind of playing a lot of roles as far as heavy nickel, but I want to say he's had some early success as a um, kind of that, that like late rush role as well. I, th I think I've seen him at, at, at safety at times as well. How, how important, how valuable is it to have a nickel who can play as many roles as he can? And, and then what is it within his skill set that kind of allows him? Right, that's an important position, the rover, we call that, because you've got to be good against the run and the pass. And then, um, you know, against 12 personnel, we have a package where we put an extra linebacker in and we put him at strong safety for Sanguinetti. And uh, I thought he had a good game uh, Saturday. Uh, you see him building uh, weekly on his uh, successes and playing with more confidence. You know, I just wish when he intercepts the pass, he wouldn't run toward the end zone and, you know, s celebrate with your teammates on the sideline, right? Championship programs don't do that. Yeah, Kurt, um, zero sacks allowed, as you mentioned. And, you know, a lot of credit goes to the offensive line, but also the running backs blocking was uh, definitely a key part. Has that always been a staple in Shanahan's offense? And how important is that for uh, those pass protection plays? Well, I mean, it's critical if you're going to drop back and throw the ball, and that's six-man protection primarily. You know, the running back's got to be a good receiver out of the backfield, but he's also got to be able to block the blitz. And our, I thought our guys did a great job uh, Saturday. We were late on one or two, uh, but all in all, uh, you know, it, it was really good. And uh, you can't throw the ball if your backs can't protect. I want to ask about Aiden and, and Jalen, they obviously play a lot of snaps for you. They don't rotate a ton. I know Aiden's got the headset in. But how important is maybe their chemistry, their relationship to football? They've already played together in this defense even before coming to Indiana, having two linebackers in there that, that can communicate, that recognize things, and maybe understand a little bit of that, that relationship. Well, it's kind of like playing with a veteran quarterback on offense. Uh, you know, both those guys know the defense. Now there's new things that go in every week, and the defense morphs year in, year out. But they have a lot of snaps in the defense, so they understand it. And, uh, you know, Aiden wears the green dot on defense. And uh, so, and they're used to playing with each other. But regardless whether they're used to playing with each other or not, they, they have specific jobs to do every single play, depending on formation and what, what happens after the ball snap. But there is definitely a familiarity with each other, yeah. Ignoring the calls from from Saturday, I was wondering if you would like to see the targeting rules kind of 
adjust it a little bit to, to create levels of, of punishment when it comes to the, those kind of plays, balancing safety and fairness, I guess. Yeah, I think there needs to be a balance there and some common sense and, uh, you know, intent also. You know, one of the probably the most hardest hits in the game was when Aiden Fisher intercepted the pass, you know, and got hit in the head, and there was there's no call for that one. And, you know, the other ones were kind of Mickey Mouse. Um, so, but, um, you know, that's the way it went down Saturday, and we're not going to change the way we play. And, you know, I don't think there was anything dirty out there, that's for sure. When I say Mikhail had like seven pressures or, or some wild number like that, um, you mentioned, I think it was like late August, that you've seen him evolve so much from 2020. Where have you seen him evolve, I guess? The yeah, most? well, I, I noticed that in spring ball. He, I think the biggest thing with him is, is he's been healthy because uh, early in his career he had a, a couple injuries. Um, you know, he, he started as a true freshman with two bad shoulders that were both surgically repaired, so he missed the next season. And now that he's been on the field, he's just gotten better every year. And, you know, I saw him turn it up another level uh, in spring ball, which is what that's sort of the natural progression you want to see in all the guys is that they build off the previous year. So he's a good athlete, he's smart, he's crafty, and, uh, you know, he plays really hard.